dead draw gaming like no one ever was. Hello and welcome back, Madison Regionals Top 8 Time. I'm Kirk Dupes next to Bay here with Russell. Where is my soapbox so I can stand up, be tall enough, Lapar? I'm quite short. <laughs> That is the running joke, and I will never give it up. Lapper. Ever. It doesn't need to be. It's a, it's a good one. It's a good one. We just watched uh, Wesley two rounds in a row, unable to uh, get his place. The slot in the top eight. Poor dude, man. Nine, what did we say? Seven people at 10-2-2. Mm -hmm. um, and um, was it three misses? Three misses. Uh, Pram, Hollenberg, and embarrassing. I don't remember, yeah, I don't remember the last one. Uh, Anti-shout-out for me for not knowing that third person. Yeah, so, we for mentioning it. We are back. This match was voted on, and it is the only match without a buzz wall. People just hate in, seeing in buzz rock. They don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Strong energy is getting old. Uh, the colors are getting annoying. Um, and honestly, uh, these two guys are homies, right? Uh, homies? Uh, well, at least we know they've played throughout this tournament okay, already. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Um, if... Uh, this is, a, this is a great time for Jake to break serve, because if we got our in information correct, Zach has played Jake twice already in this tournament. Once day one, in day two, two Odom. Two Odom both times. Sauced him up. Uh, so if, if there's any time for Jake and the, the Frog Warriors to come through, it is right now. Oh, man, dude. Um, what are you all doing to us at home with, yeah, this, usually, with this vote? Usually, Giratina's enough to be like, you're done, son, right? Shadow Stitch is just busted. Shadow like Stitch is too can't, strong. He can't even take it. Too strong. So, his actual game plan, in my opinion, um, should be get down to Giratina, get a um, Dawn Wings loaded, and just start hitting with Dark Flash, and um, set up an Ultra on the bench to try and go for a cleanup on the first break or the first uh, Stage 2 Greninja that gets out, or first Greninja that gets out, right? Um, and from there, you go, like, uh, one Frogadier, um, if you go first and you get a turn two, which you don't, not with his list because he doesn't play Elixir, um, then it's probably going to be the first hits on a Frogadier, the next hit's going to be on a Greninja, and then you just have to hope that they stumbled at some point. So let me ask you this, Russ. How many, if any, uh, yeah. Malamar should Zach try and set up? Um, two. Two? Two's the right yeah, number? Yeah, like, I, I, I still go for the NKs, and I still force you to have this, uh, the Shadow Stitch every single turn, and if there's ever an opportunity where you're forcing your opponent to Moonlight Slash you, then you're extremely happy about that. Um, so then you're like, oh, I see Malamar is back up. Uh, if you get down to Giratina, then they can't, um, they're not going to like do dam bench damage to you anyways. So it's just Shadow Stitches. The good news is, is uh, on Zach Taylor's side, that Ultra ne Necrozma hits a pretty good number in 170. Yes. Which is uh, obviously key yeah. uh, against this Greninja break. Jeff Saran on the sidelines throwing up some uh, some sick dance moves in, in our <laughs> periphery here while these guys shuffling up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're each drawn here. We each had to take a mulligan. Um, no, Jake, nothing in Jake's. Thankfully, takes another mulligan. Oh, both take a look mulligan. Look at that. Look wow. at that. Showing, showing each other respect. Nobody's getting card advantage here. Nope. They're, they're both going back, getting their uh, shuffling practice in, judge keeping them honest over there, making sure that bottom card finds its way back into the deck. Yeah. Uh, has been an issue all season, people's uh, approach to shuffling. Thoughts on that, Russ, while we've got a moment? Um, well de said. Declumping <laughs> isn't exactly cheating. It's just unnecessary. If you're doing what you're supposed to correctly, right, it doesn't matter. If you, yeah, if you're sufficiently shuffling, then you should just be able to do it, uh, like get your um, proper uh, shuffle, randomization, yep. without uh, need to go through and declump. But I do understand the thought process behind it just makes me feel better about I, seeing them uh, not near each other. Yep, exactly. Uh, we see a pretty good start on Jake's side. Uh, I guess that free retreater in the active. Brooklet Hill down. Going to get another uh, Froki, I imagine, here. Yep. Cute little froggos. Annoying little froggos. I think uh, declumping is like a placebo effect. Yes. Like, it feels better. And then people are just like, no, declumping is automatically cheating. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that. However, if you just properly randomize afterwards anyways, then you, you did nothing. Correct. Just wasted time. Correct. And time is quite valuable in this game. Um, as we've seen throughout the Swiss rounds, that scooping a game two can lead to you kicking your opponent in the face game three and be able to close out yeah. before getting that tie thrown at you. Um, and it seems like Zach and Jake just only took two ties the whole tournament. That's pretty good. That's actually That's pretty good. I believe uh, Zach actually took two intentional ones. Yeah. Um, Greninja is sometimes known to, to get a tie or two here or there. Um, but Zach definitely uh, was at a 10 2 at one point and yeah. then just double drew in. So good on him. Mystery treasure, dumping a psychic, getting that ink, like okay. you said. Why not a guarantee in it? I'm scared. That's actually a great point. You might have it. No, you don't need it instantly. You can get it later on. You can be patient with it. 
So, uh, Floatstone comes down, also to cause bit is needed, and Choice Band's useless in this matchup. Yep. Oh, and he dumps double Lele, no problem. Yeah, you, you, you don't want to actually have those. That's actually a great, great Sycamore. The only thing you would ask for is the other Sycamore would be tucked away in the deck somewhere yeah. for later in the game. But getting rid of those two, uh, those two tapped Lele, to your point, perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, metal Energy, pretty big, coming down turn one. Absolutely. That's, that is the hard piece to find in this uh, attacking uh combo here, if you will, yeah. for the Ultra Necrozma. So, looks like Jake's hand went from meh to kind of dead, um, to ripping an end right off the top, and uh, we in it now. Yeah. We in he, it, baby. He's got an opportunity uh, to get himself, uh, as Michael Slutsky put it, dupes me daddy. Yeah. All the frogs. Let's see if he prized any. Um, none so far. We got one. Two. Two. One prized. One, Give two. it a look, Sue, just to see if I might have missed it. Nah, just kidding. Yeah. Two frog dudes. Ha, ha, and ha. I really like Jake for doing this. Um, he didn't flop down the end. He just straight up said, Evo Soda, retreat, and um, get the dupes going so you don't draw the frog deer and exactly. end up losing because you drew them. Um, that's a great. That's a, yeah. That's a great point. It's uh, you know, as we mentioned before, proper order of operations uh, yeah. makes a difference in this game. It's a pretty big deal. Lowering your uh, risk, getting a higher return on investment of that frog deer. I believe they call that the ROI, Russ. Oh, indeed. Professor's letter. Uh, I think he's gonna grab a psychic. I don't, I don't know. I'm not crazy. Psychic smells pretty good in this situation. Two psychics. Yeah. Load uh, it up. He still gets. Uh, he still gets. Uh, a Malamar turn if he if he can get it yes. if he can get some uh, Malamars in play and then get the, um, get that Dawn Wings down Dawn Wings would be huge want. again because uh, you want to get those three psychics and use what attack Russ uh, Dark Flash Dark Flash Dark Flash the Flash and okay uh, looks like he's might throw not another Floatstone here I don't know why he's thinking no. uh, Floatstone crazies and he's opting not to bench the mimic you. But I actually don't hate it. You can get some shadow stitches off with that guy. Yeah, uh, um, and they can shadow stitch you back for a two hit. Uh, there's uh, there's oh. the Necrozma we were talking about. He's gonna bench that uh, notable Mega Man villain, Flashman. Flashman? Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. Right, chill, 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 chill. Uh, Mysterious treasure, ink a down. Malamar here. Question Your Prize? Oh no, he's got it. All right. Being patient, got the turn one in K just to get the Malamar, um, yep. and now he's got the Garrett. Uh, there we go. Um, uh, he can uh, obviously uh, use uh, Psychic Recharge, I yep. believe is what it's called, yep. uh, to get. He does have a Psychic in there from uh, first turn, so that immediately going to Flashman. <laughs> and Choice Man down for no reason, just to never ha see it again. Yeah. <laughs> Effectively, is why he's doing uh, that. He might hit. Um, he might hit his Feeny. Uh, I'm pretty sure he plays one of his lists. Nope, he's just playing the Lele. Crazy. Uh, bold choice. Tapu Fini has uh, historically put in a lot of work for Greninja deck. Especially against Buzzrock. But, uh, you know, it's a new world. Forbidden Light world. Yes. Jake goes, no, 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 no. Nah, nah, nah. nah, nah. Uh, Eva Soto, Greninja. I don't need that reliability Band, anywhere and near. And I'm pretty sure he's going to end here. End, boys. And now begins the long, annoying... Shadow Stitch, Shadow Stitch, Shadow Stitch. Should uh, he get a Water Energy? Yeah, should if, he get... Should he get that would be... Energy. A uh, huge win for Zach if Jake fails to find. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Here. Yeah! He's gonna run him over. Um, obviously, with the psychic already in the discard, Flashman one energy attachment away from being powered up, or he can uh, rush in. Whatever. He's got tons of options here. Or rush in. And I'm not seeing a blue yet. <gasps> no. No. He water. missed it. Jake missed it. Oh, and maybe he's taking, he's taking extra time to flip through mm. his cards. Double checking. Maybe if I ruffle them together, it'll yeah, change yeah. a little bit. Trying to get a little David Copperfield on that action, change him up. What's actually in the deck? What can I have in my hand? Uh, slow rolling it with the Brooklet Hill before he passes, much to his dismay. And honestly, did we see an Evo Soda in the hand? I saw a Max Push and I saw a break. If he doesn't see another Greninja here, that's that's kind of scary. You can, you can get Guzma and then Dark Flash, um, or Guzma and Ultra Necrozma. And that'd be very awkward for him. Um, Field Blowers away at Float Stones. I don't hate that. Um, definitely get the star you out of there. Yeah, you're going to need that. That's a, a hard that's a pass. Resource. Okay, so I got... Oh, we see a Lele, a break. Okay, do you even play the end here? Oh, he has the ability to uh, Mysterious Treasure, get another Psychic in the discard, get another Malinomar play, double Psychic, recharge. He might want to go for Lele here. But, okay. He's going to go with the, uh, the attach. 
And this, oh, this is going to be a very awkward turn to kind of navigate through. So do you let her get a psychic in? Like, I feel like you want to be able to just, while you have this extra Malamar turn, because he could have gotten another psychic in the discard here and put two more on board. Wow, okay, okay. That's what he's doing. Going for the Malamar, going for the uh, the fully loaded. I thought he should have, oh, he has both Lele's already in discard pile. Right, he already support. has Lele's in yep. discard pile, but he did have a professor's letter there. He yes. could have pulled another psychic out of the deck, Mysterious Treasured with that to get the Malamar, yep. and then Cynthia giving him two psychics. If I, And they're already in there, so there you go. Yeah, There's I'm, me. I'm thinking he's holding it um, to keep the uh, metal energy uh, in the future. Should he get one knocked out and need another one later on? Great point. And as we mentioned before, that is the hardest resource for him to get yep. to get uh, Alternate Cosmo in a place where he can uh, do some real damage. So Invasion is coming in. Um, another Dawnwings comes down, attaching to that one. And here we start the Dark Flash versus Shadow Stitching. Maybe the recipe for success here for Zach uh, in the Swiss rounds was for Jake to just miss everything. Oh, yeah. And hit, uh, miss, the, miss the energy. And Enhanced hammer. Enhanced hammer. Kind of useless right now. No beast energy on board. Not, not, not going to get a lot of mileage out of that. It, it's going to have to come up with that key, uh, as you said, beast energy turn. And we see a monstrous Sycamore come through for Jake. Um, I saw a Greninja. I saw a bunch of water energy. I saw a um, rescue stretcher. Unless my eyes deceived me. I don't believe so. Yup. And that, get, that needs to throw back in the Frogadier. Um, that got knocked out or put it right on the Froki. Okay, I like it. Um, it looks like he's saving the other Evo Soda he might have in hand. Uh, did we get a splash energy there? No, we just have the water. Um, however, Dark Flash is only 120. So it's definitely going to be a two-hit KO here. So Shadow Stitching being key with the Choice Band being 70, he's still three-piecing this. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 you're taking a, a hot minute to take out the boys. And he's debating if he even wants to do it here. Okay. So Shadow Stitching comes down. He might have Moonlight Slash and just said, yeah, whatever. I don't know if you got it. Um, and Field Blower's big. Field Blower's huge, taking out that Choice Band. Does he attach to... the the, um, the Dawn Wings here for the consistent damage? Looks like he does. I think so. I think that's, you know, the whole adage of slow and steady wins the race. Uh, Greninja not going to be applying a lot of pressure. Has to, is, he's priced into Shadow Stitching the yep. whole game um, until the end of the game. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to see 120, 120, 120s all game long, uh, really using just the consistency of the 120 to, to get it done. Yep. Looks like Dark Flash comes out. Um, Field Blower drops. I'm not sure if I was Jake, I'd take off that band there. I'd leave that band on. Um, but however, he already got rid of three floats, I believe. Three floats down, and he does play uh, three on the nose. Yep. So that's no longer a concern nope. uh, for Jake. Maybe because they've played so much in the Swiss rounds, uh, Jake might be a little bit aware of kind of what the counts are yep. and things. Absolutely. And uh, has kind of like a mental inventory of those yeah. uh, to keep track of during this game. Sometimes Greninja games can go super late, um, where you're trying to mount those huge comebacks, and you just check out each other's discard pile, like, all right. Uh, before you scoop, let me see your discard. Yep. <laughs> so yep, let me yep. see, check how many floats you get. So we see an N, Jake going up to six. Splash energy uh, might be a big deal here. Definitely okay. going to want to recycle a Greninja. Evo, Evo Soda. Soda here, Starmie. No, okay. Uh, Did you see any more water? I didn't, but that is one thin deck right yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I absolutely think he should have gone for the Starmie, or he's definitely going to evolve here, which means it's prized. It's prized. It's prized. It's got to be. Okay, Moonlight Slash for the knockout with the band. Okay, so well he can one hit if he's got something that can hard retreat, which uh, the which Necrozma can. can. Yeah. The the uh, the Reg Necrozma, not uh, Dawn Wings can. No, no. Ultra can. Absolutely. But by doing that, he plays himself into a corner where now he has all his energy removed from the board, all his energy popped off to take out a break, and then now he can't use psychic recharge to grab anything back. But so with, yeah, definitely not the play. Without a splash energy or anything on the board, you not you don't do you not think it's a consideration to maybe get a break off the board, and that leaves Jake with a heavily damaged. No, definitely not needed. Um, we already saw the stretcher. One stretcher came out. You get the other Greninja down. Even if you clear this break, the um, the other one's going to come active and and really do damage to you. Um, you're two shotting everything anyways, and Giratina's down. He's not going to go for a shuriken the entire game, um, at any point. So he should just be thinking, I need a two hit KO. All these breaks. And I need to be able to consistently do it, and that's going to be with Psychic Recharge and Invasion. Um, his other second option is to start swinging with a Malamar and deal 60 and 60, and that could be a follow-up damage to the uh, the 120 that he throws down with Dark Flash. So like 120, 
Um, he could have flipped over retreated, but now that's, that option's out of there. Maybe go for a Guzma on the other bench one that got damaged and, and kind of start working in new attackers that we're not used to seeing um, this deck really create. But getting an ultra active, using it all to burn, uh, one, one shot really limits the damage output that he'll be able to do. And because the deck relies so heavily on um, Psychic Recharge, if he's able to just, oh, I'll move all my energy and then they just keep shadow stitching you, you're just going to lose the game in that one. That's fair. Back into the action here, we've got uh, Zach. He Ultra Balled for nothing. Yep. Uh, played down a Psychic Energy. Be he does have access to what we'll call historically the stand-in ability. Um, does have Psychic Recharge, so he's setting himself up for a big one-hit KO on another Greninja break if he's got it. Sticking with that 120 plan, to your point, uh, really putting a lot of pressure on Jake to find something here. Yep. So... 120 on the first Greninja, 120 on the next one. Um, the Super Rod comes down, and we're gonna probably see a, uh, yeah, a break, a Froki, and the other Froki come out. Um, they're gonna get all shuffled back in, and let's see if you got a Brooklyn Hill or anything to bring it back out. So something to consider with Jake's list, uh, maybe took into consideration uh, that the one-shot wars outside of maybe the Buzzwall matchup, kind of over. Uh, he is playing two max potion over what historically we've yep. seen the other Feeny, and that's a big deal here. He hasn't played any down yet. We did see one earlier. I can't recall if he sycamored it away. Yep. Um, he did. Okay. No, 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 no. He didn't. He didn't. Okay. He didn't. He didn't. So having access to that, Starmie wasn't prized. So here we go. Um, Jake, if he hits a max potion here, mm -hmm. um, pretty good. Interesting putting the splash energy on the active. Uh, he could have taken uh, Starmie off the two prizes on the knockout on the Dawn Wings that he had last turn, off the Moonlight Slash. Yeah, because uh, that's true. Yeah, Zach, so Zach Cynthia did not end, so uh, that would have been in his hand for this turn. And Jake's just kind of thinking here, if once I hit a Max Potion, or if I make another break on this final Greninja, um, Curtains. Pretty much just Shadow Cynthia, stitching. I didn't see a Max Potion. I think I saw two Energy, a couple Supporters, a uh, yep. Splash, and a Water. Um, again, would have loved to hit that Max Potion here. Absolutely. Jake kind of going through the paces, seeing how he can uh, correctly apply pressure to uh, a pretty stout-looking board on Zach's side. Yep. Um, I was weary about him attaching that Splash Energy to active. I was thinking he just retreats to the other clean one and then Splash Energy it, but maybe he just wants that break line as well. Um, I was thinking you just prize denial as much as you can. Yep. Um, and then use your Splash Energy to really take full value once your opponent's burning through resources just to make attacks happen. Uh, so he's going to Moonlight Slash. Okay, he's giving him access to his uh, abilities here. Yep. Maybe seeing that kind of the worst is over. M maybe, you know, he, he's already got all his energy on board. Yeah. What am I actually keeping him from doing by Shadow Stitching here? Let's let's ramp up the damage and make something happen. So Psychic Recharge got, has one... And just one. So one psychic energy in that discard pile. Um, Malamar swings for 60. Giratina swings for 110. But if you swing a Giratina and he KOs it, you're, just, you're unleashing the beast. Yeah, th uh, then, uh, then it truly is over for you. Yep. So uh, the other thoughts, bench another Ultra. Okay, I like it. And let's see, he's got a so, letter, and Ultra Ball. I like letter, get your metal. Yep. Psychic recharge onto that. At least it's chipping in for 80, worst case scenario. If you get another psychic, he does have more psychics in his deck. So we can actually set up to have that 170 number on two separate Pokemon here while taking out a knockout. Um, on the active. On the active. Yeah. And if Jake wants to take this Necrozma out, Flashman out, he's got psychic recharge with three psychics in his discard now. Yeah. So it looks like he just goes for an Ultra Ball, um, dumps it off the Mew and uh, some other useless cards in his mind, um, and then goes for a ban on the active and a nice end. His deck is super thin. Beast Ring is online. Um, he is at uh, four prizes each. And honestly, if Jake keeps benching these 60 HP Pokemon and we go down to six prizes total in the game, yep. we can see the uh, Ultra Necrozma's GX attack, which we haven't seen before on stream. We haven't seen it on stream, but Zach has mentioned uh, in his post-game interview that he's been using it a lot. Yeah. Um, Sky, Scorching Light, GX. Busted. Uh, and I can see how that did a lot of work against Zorark decks. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, once you're taking knockouts, they're trying to reestablish their draw engine, things like that. Yeah. Uh, and it's just sitting there waiting to uh, waiting to get plucked Because honestly, I'd forget about that attack every so often. I'd be like, oh, what, do you, what else does that do? Can I do GX attack? Um, and, you know, he's just going to kind of remind them, you shouldn't forget. Right. Don't, don't forget about me. Hard retreating. The invasion here. Okay, he really wants to save that. And takes the clean knockout off of one energy. Um, 
I'm not sure how I felt about that invasion. Maybe he's thinking to himself, I'm going to bring up an Ultra, and then when I get Shadow Stitch, I, I might Guzma next turn. I just, I just think that hard retreating the two energy did a lot of set. Uh, it was a big setback <clears throat> towards total damage output. We de do see the beast energy in his hand maybe leaning to, okay, to, to like over his damage output. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm not exactly sure uh, what Zach is thinking here. Clearly, he's been successful with his deck all day. Yeah. So he's got something in mind. He's got something teed up. I would have loved to see uh, just two fully powered up Ultra Necrozmas on bench uh, and, and uh, like make Jake make a decision if he's going to Shadow Stitch and let you chip in for another 120 or take the knockout and then unleash uh, your ability to use uh, Psychic Recharge yeah. uh, to even power up, like you said, a Malamar, just in case. The little damage goes a long way. We see a Beast Energy, Psychic Energy, and I believe that's an Ultra Ball or a Rescue Stretcher um, in Zach's hand. And Jake finds a Water... Uh, but splash, 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 water, unknown. Hopefully, it's a max potion. The the kid needs something. Yep. All right, so he's gonna he's gonna stitch here, um, get in the seventy, and just hope that Zach didn't draw. And he's got the psychic, power. which means he can just tink. Yeah, hit it, hit him for the the clean KO here. Yep. And then the splash energy is gonna put the line back into his hand. He's gonna get a frogadier, which means it's gonna regulate that GX attack off of um. Uh, the Ultra Necrozma, meaning that Froki on the bench is going to turn to immediate food. Yeah. Just uh, get a little softened up. Oh, yeah, big time. So we see the Beast Energy come down. So that deals 50 damage, which is the knockout, and he doesn't have to discard anything off of it. Okay, I like it. Because it's only basic oh, psychic. So this future. is a great play here, um, and he's got the other psychic in his hand. So depending on how Jake plays out his turn, he's still got the option to hit uh, for 80 next turn, or excuse me, to hit for uh, two, 130 next turn with that psychic. Okay. And, he, and again, I really like the pressure of making Jake decide between Shadow Stitch or Absolutely. Uh, the, the heavy damage Moonlight but, Slash. All right, he's in a great position here because Jake missing that Frogadier last turn or any way to get to it means that once I take a KO on this active break off my Bench Ultra Necrozma or my active one, then uh, I'm setting you up where you don't even have a break on board the next turn. And 130 is, that's in range. Um, I, what I, if I'm Jake, what I'm thinking here is if I don't take this off the board, he can hard retreat into his other Necrozma yep. and take the 170 KO, leave Jake with uh, literally just a, a regular Greninja 130, like you said. Yep, so it looks like a status is coming out again, um, negating that second recharge, but uh, Zach's got it. He just got a psychic in hand. That's all I need. Yep. So let's see what's going on with this damage output. Uh, three in discard pile. He can hard retreat off the beast energy because I believe his active ones will only be doing 130. Off the energy rate? Correct. So a hard retreat here into the other Ultra Necrozma yep. unlocks the knockout here and puts Jake behind a turn on having a Greninja break in play. Yep. And he's going to go with the metal energy. Probably conserve the beast energy. Yep. Retreat the two. Um, however, Jake does play that enhanced. And uh, that can get factored into the game. Uh, he, he, has diff he has two of them in. And um, yeah, Zach's just taking that risk. Like, whatever. If you got it, you got it. Yep. Uh, uh, I can see how Zach saw a lot of success here. Jake missed one turn, uh, and Zach made him pay immediately. Uh, in uh, Just Jake missing that uh, water energy on the key first shadow stitching turn. Yep. Unlocked the game for Zach, and he's put the pressure on. Uh, he's put his boots to his throat and hasn't really let him uh, get in the air. Now, one thing I'm scared of right now is um, Jake just benched that extra Froki, meaning... If GX we, attack wins GX the game. GX attack wins the game. Um, and how much does that cost again? Off of uh, the GX? It's, uh, it's a metal and a psychic. Wow. Metal psychic. Yep. My man needs to hit that. Uh, he needs to hit that. What's it called? Right now. Sky yeah, scorching light GX Zach. That's uh, that's a way to victory. He's Is it got here. six prizes or less, or exactly at six prizes? We don't see this too often. Uh, da, 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 remaining six, six, exactly six or less. Okay. Perfect. So, so we are at exactly six or less. Psychic energy gets it done. He gets Guzma N. Would you even play the N here? Oh, I don't like that. I'll just wait it out. Honestly, uh, Guzma... Plus is, psychic energy? Peace. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, we're done here. I mean, just Guzma into uh, uh, Starmie or Froki. Yeah. And then you can hit for 50 with the damaged thing if you want to and still kind of save all your energy on board yeah no uh he didn't have another energy in hand 
um, to hit with, so he couldn't just use a beast energy while. Oh, while correct. Okay, he, I, he, I thought, he, I thought that was the other card. Energy. I was thinking he sits on the Guzma until he drops that psychic, and he's like, "Peace, I got it." Yep. Um, but great point. Great point. Looks like he just hard passed. Um, Jake's gonna give up a Cynthia here. How much you want to bet both max potions come rolling off the top here? <laughs> <laughs> At least one. He's got four prizes left. We haven't seen that many. Um, we saw one earlier in the game, so I'm pretty sure he's sitting on the one left. Uh, enhanced hammer was in discard, I think. But okay. We'll see. Two, three, four, five, six. A way to get a Frokadier here. Frogadier. Things getting Sorry. real silly with his draw steps. He's yeah. getting he's getting some wonky ones. That's All right, for so sure. we got a break instead. Uh, really going to lean on that splash energy. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he's really taking into consideration that GX attack. It's not commonly used. No. Uh, it's a really, especially with his first big weekend in a United States regional. It's a big surprise factor for sure. Definitely. Uh, a psychic, psychic off the top. GX bang. Bang. Jake didn't even see it. Jake's like, can Jake I read did, it? Exactly. <laughs> can I, can exactly I right. That's, and that's Sky exactly what I was talking about. That's exactly what I was talking about. That's exactly what I was talking about. Don't bench uh, the froggy. Yeah, yeah. Great game. Easily, great game. easily, like you mentioned, Ultra Ball, get that get that uh, Frogadier down, prevent yourself from that. And with such a bizarre and unique GX attack, Sky Scorching Light GX, <laughs> uh, didn't see it coming. That hits you like a train. <laughs> get off the tracks that, that coming through. This. Pure silly is. Um, did he have Frogadiers in his deck? Uh, didn't, uh, he was, was, rod, was, didn't he rod? Didn't he rod one back? He rotted, but um, I think it was only one, and one of those made, might have made the active Greninja we saw. Okay. Um, I'm sorry on our end, we didn't keep track of how many Frogadiers were going back in. Uh, but a lot of honestly, stuff. Honestly, that Froki was risky. Super risky business. He needed to evolve at that turn if he had it in his deck. Um, next time, read your opponent's GX stacks? Yep, uh, that's a lesson learned here. Uh, <laughs> And which leads me to believe that Zach won every one of their games otherwise, having never announced that. Yeah, never, nor never threatened it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a, sky <laughs> Scorching Light GX, sky and here we are. Sky Scorching Light. Uh, first game taking uh, 25 minutes, got about 50 on the clock. So, my boy's 1 4 now. Zach against uh, Jake's old ninjas. <laughs> he's, 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 he's got routes, and honestly, missing, uh, missing that opening shadow stitch when he, with the energy. Game changing. Yeah. Game, game, game changing, changing 100%. Um, and to your point, you said when I asked you how many Malamars did you try to set up to make him have it? Yep. Um, Man, he yeah. didn't have it, and he was able to Malamar, Mysterious Treasure, Malamar, go. Uh, powered up two attackers, uh, Flashman, Necrozma, and Ultra Necrozma, and go to work. Oh, no. Jake with the Lele start. Punished. Oh. Uh, oh frogs, you know, frogs do it to themselves. <laughs> this is true. what happens when you play the deck. You live by like the frog, you die by the frog. The only way you get it out is if you have a good ninja break in your lap. Oh boy! Oh man, <laughs> that uh, that has been said. On that. Yeah, that, that, right, that's where yeah, we're at yeah. now. All right, Brooklyn Hill. Uh, I think he's getting a Froki. Brooklyn Thrill. Uh, he is gonna get a Froki. Yeah, I think he's gonna get a Froki. Uh, Draw prize. Uh, GG. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, many how many Froggy? How many in there? Oh, Enough to keep playing. I, I, th I think I saw two at least. Enough to keep playing. If you're in this position and yep. you go through and you find a three or Froggy surprise, if you're Jake. Yeah. Uh, do you just extend the hand and Absolutely say, not. He can prize guarantee and we pop off on him. One break is all you need. A chip in a chair, a chip in a break. Um, definitely attach the water here. Go for the Cynthia, unless he already has evolution in hand. I think he sees a Sycamore, Sycamore. Field Blower, and... Choice Man, maybe? Yeah. All right, Cynthia. I like it. Yeah. A little bit more aggressive. Um, clearly, the Field Blowers mattered. Taking off all the float stones in the, uh, the first game was like critical towards forcing Zach to have these retreat options. Yep. Um, uh, uh, forcing Zach to hard retreat uh, twice, I believe, that game. Yep. Uh, where those three float stones could have been used, especially because he did have to switch gears from the shadow stitching plan to the moonlight slash plan, which yep. opened up uh, that Russian the gates, retreat. The gates of the invasion. Um, all right. Crazy hand. Uh, I do see a water energy, a frogadier, and a field blower. So he's, he's all kitted up. He's ready to go. He's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, he's got yeah. some good options here. Uh, pass over to Zach. We got something going on with the judge here, so we'll just take one moment. moment to see what's going on. Looks like they're having a little deliberation. We, we saw Zach flip a thumbs up. I think we're good to go. Draw for turn. Okay. Ultra Necrozma comes down. Uh, psychic to the active. Float zone to the active. Mysterious energy. Mysterious treasure. Dumps Mysterious, the metal excuse energy. me. Yeah. Mysterious treasure. Do you not uh, attach your metal energy to your I was ultimate cross? He, he there. just think was that incredibly wrong. Uh, dumped the psychic, uh, attached the uh, the metal energy to the ultra, and then floats on the active, and you're chilling. Uh, maybe uh, Zach getting uh, getting a little ahead of himself there, yep. seeing seeing something a little bit different. 
Um, right. Here comes the Sycamore for seven. Discarding a B string. Hopefully not infinitely punished by dumping that metal no, energy so all. early. Yeah. Okay, we got NK. Um, another NK, Bridget. I don't think you bench that NK. Pretty much a dead hand. I'm pretty sure you need that bench spot later on for um, one of your attackers. 100%. And you um, might just go with a pass here. If he doesn't have a draw supporter, I don't mind uh, maybe getting an ultra ball. Trying to, I guess he does have one turn off because uh, Jake is going to have to water dupes here. Yep. So you still technically have access to Tapu Lele if you need it. Yeah. So th that makes sense there. Understandable. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, Jake ripped a Frogadier into that hand. Oh, and the end puts it back. Okay. Um. So... He so he already drew a frogadier. He and he already had a frogadier. Yeah. So uh, Jake kind of uh, balancing out his options a little bit here. Definitely better to shuffle it in. Hope hopefully you don't pluck a frogadier off yeah, your six I'll, and yeah, then I'll water dupes. Yeah. Um, statistically, it's probably uh, even if he does, he has that bench froggy. So um, yes. turn right into a frogadier, but it's just step behind on your Greninjas. We just don't want to see two. Essentially, nope. that's where he's at. If he gets one, he's where he was. Oh, if he gets and two, he's clean, clean, clean. Okay, so, so he's got the bench space available here for the full three uh, Frogadier if they're in the deck. Yep. Dupes me, Daddy, coming down. Shout out, Michael Slutsky. We know at least one's in there. Two. Two. And he might know already. And so he's just going to give a quick sift through. I feel like if... Because he did three. a search... Three. Okay. Already. I was about to say, if he didn't have the third one, he did a search earlier. And if that's the case, you bench the Froki that's in your hand. Absolutely. Um... Definitely had to check before. Brooklet Hill obviously helps keeping mm -hmm. inventory. Now we got to keep in mind though, bench is full. Uh, star you star me. Not the, not a factor right now. Right now. It's going to be in the future. That's why opening that lele just really really sucks. Um, it hurts him, but and hard pass coming out um, after the water dupes. Uh, going to attach a psychic has a psychic in hand and a way to get a Malamar. Okay, Sycamore dumps a psychic. He has so, an Ultra Ball in that hand. Um, he can go Invasion. He didn't have an Ultra Ball. It was a Scratcher. Okay. I was about to say, if it's an Ultra Ball, obviously you get the Malamar down. He does have... He certainly has an Ultra Ball now. Uh, I think you got to get a Malamar and oh. get that Psychic back onto your boy. Start yep. hitting in 120. Flash and Man. I think now he's debating whether or not he wants to dump this other Psychic with his Treasure. Because um, you're getting Shadow Stitch next turn. Correct. I think getting two in there. And if you have a way... If you have access to two Malamar... Yeah. Just start churning them in. Yep, that's what he's doing. And he has the Ultra Ball, Choice Band, useless. Another NK, useless. 2-2, two, two, all you need. Two Mali, um, and then uh, two attackers. And that, that Floatstone on the invasion is, is going to pay dividends. It is, uh, it is. you're going to get a clean KO off the active. Uh, you're going to pluck one off for prizes, and if he just for some reason stumbles and doesn't get the Shadow Sits next turn, then you're like, all right, this alternate Crossman gets more energy and retreated instantly. Yep. So we're going to see uh, Psychic Recharge, one on Flashman Necrozma, one on Ultra Necrozma, and we're going to start 120-ing as we were describing kind of Zach's uh, game plan that he applied game one. Invasion. Dark Flash. Shadow Stitching seemed like it could have been very uh, oppressive in this matchup, um, but the way it's broken down, just one turn of Psychic Recharge really puts Zack in a position to continually pick up these knockouts. Absolutely. But we need to notice here, Zack still does not have Giratina down. He does not. So if he gets a break online, Shuriken's, you know, throwing around, calling each other Naruto. <laughs> uh, we don't even know what's going down, but... Ninji Star. <laughs> Uh, he gets a star you. We talked with, about it earlier. With the as knockout. That, uh, as soon as that bench spot opened up, you gotta get out of there. Um, but he needs to make sure that he has an evolution. Because if that star me doesn't hit play, that's that's food for the Sky Scorch. No, 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 which, as we know, in these frog decks, they play these heavy supporter lines so late game since they don't have a draw engine like a lot of these oh, other decks. I vomit out Greninja. Just, yeah. Frog's putting in work here, and Zach has one turn. It's Giratina in hand, Rip too the, good. Rip the Giratina off the prizes. First Was that prize, it? First prize. No oh, prize, no problem. Skill Easy. game. Free. Skill game. Free. <laughs> we, saw it, we saw it round one today with Caleb Gettimer. It's just always rolling off the yeah, top. Yeah, oh, it's, oh, it's, it's always rolling off the top. And for well, people to go, oh, he's getting lucky all day. Um, I cannot imagine someone winning originals without getting lucky quote unquote lucky at some point uh, it is a game of variance it comes into play and you want to be on a positive side of that to win yourself a tournament yep that's just how it goes um, we see a Cynthia here 4-6 and all he really wants to see is energy um, specifically he would love to energy. see a metal yeah uh, and uh, we're probably going to see him lean on these professor's letter if he ever can get to one yep um, shadow stitching coming down putting a psychic which is fine I like that uh, simply because he doesn't yeah. have the 
metal energy yet, so he's probably safer off uh, just putting it on flash mana grog. Absolutely. So you just dark flash here, um, knowing that you have uh, floatstone retreat. Jake does rip the field blower, and field blower can um, ruin those game plans if he decides to retreat into another uh, Greninja, go for another Shadow Stitch, and uh, take off the floatstone. But we'll see what he wants to do. Okay, definitely taking that one off. And does he have a supporter? He does. He has an end. Okay, so I like the evolution of the uh, Greninja break on the bench there. Yeah, uh, no damage. Know, exactly. It's totally clean. Uh, as we know, Greninja does have that free retreat, yeah. which is huge. It really is what allows this deck to churn through its breaks when it, uh, Shuriken is live. Yeah. Um, really knows, worst case scenario, free retreat into the clean one, get back to shadow stitching. Yep. Uh, fresh six. Um, we do max see a potion. max potion off the top. Max potion Plus is big. the splash energy. This is great. This is exactly what Jake wants. Max potion, splash energy, choice ban. Three notable cards there that he definitely wanted. Free retreat, unimpacted by the fact that he's losing that energy. Band, splash. Just shadow stitch. Yep, totally fine. Totally fine with that. Oh, and we saw Zach did get a metal energy. Uh, now, does he play it? Floatstone right is, is... The floatstone is pretty big. Okay. So... Letter comes out, grabs two psychics. Um, we're, we're loaded. Yep. We're, we're ready to go. However, can he? Do you think he's going to take the turn to retreat, or he's going to put the 120 onto the Greninja? Might fall victim right into the uh, another max potion. Uh, I like to think Zach by now knows, with the amount of times they played, that he is playing at least two max potion. Yep. Um, I like getting the damage on the board personally, conserving that energy, because you don't have access to that psychic recharge that normally would allow you to make those plays. Um, I think you just smack in here. Float? Considering and if he it, does this, he's thinking to himself, you can't go up off the bench, and this guy's going to be attacked. All right, perfect, perfect okay. Perfect. Zach, Zach sees what we saw, uh, does not want to commit to the float zone, can use it as a pivot point, uh, kind of giving himself a, a cheeky promotion yeah. uh, next time when, when, something, something, yep, something when this is knocked out, and uh, kind of giving himself the most amount of information when he's making decisions. So Cynthia comes down. We have two or three Cynthia's played. Sycamore discarded another Sycamore. Two ends played. Um, he's running low on supporters, but look at his board. We got a break. We got a uh, Greninja that's fresh. Another yeah. Greninja. Um, even gets KO'd. You splash energy back in your hand. Evolve the active fro uh, the Frogadier you have on the bench. You're, you're kind of chilling right now if you're, um, if you're Jake. You just need to um, have that more oppressive... Uh, start maybe hit another band. Starmy, oh, beautiful perfect. off the prizes. Yep. Water energy is great, um, or not off the prizes, off that draw. Yep. Excuse me, Greninja break coming down. Um, totally fine letting this uh, Pokemon uh, in the active yep. get KO'd. It's got splash energy. He's going to be picking those back up. Um, I like him not putting down the choice band because he knows Zach does play field blower. Absolutely. And choice band is what really allows that shadow stitching to be so oppressive because yeah. it's it's pressuring him quite a bit more. I'd rather get this card end away than I'd rather see it hit the discard pile. And now my shadow stitching does 40 instead of 70. 1,000%. Almost, almost put the metal energy down on Flashman and Krosma. That would have been terrible. <laughs> Horrible. That would have Horrible. Been, that would have been bad for the Mega Man villain. So... Oh, so we got here. We're uh, searching through. We're going to grab a Lele. Can't use his ability because you are under Shadow Stitch. Um, so just puts it in his hand. Deck thing a bit. Yep. Um, this Ultra Ball isn't even used for anything else. And at this point, I think you just come in Dark Flash. And um, we're going to be at uh, four prizes apiece regardless of uh, what the stream's currently saying. Oh, he's going to mm -hmm. land a Eclipse. No. Uh, yes, he is. So he, it can't get damaged on the comeback, right? Moon's Eclipse. And that's going to be a, a knockout because Jake is at four prizes and now they're tied four apiece. And he's not going to take any damage from Shadow Stitching this turn. He, nope. He's pretty much clean. Yep. And as we know, uh, historically from corner plays, yep. uh, uh, Greninja just doesn't run Guzma. No, no, absolutely not. It does not. No so, need. A heads up play. Heads up play there by Zach. Kind of giving himself uh, a turn of reprieve from, from getting damage. Jake still has to Shadow Stitch. Yeah. Shadow just comes down. Did he band? He didn't band. He just went, okay, I'll take the uh, 180 knockout. Uh, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage. I was That's what I was reading. I was just double-checking the read there. <laughs> 40 damage, uh, no need to come down. Yeah. Is it from ES and GXs or everyone? I'm pretty sure it's everyone. Uh, it's everyone. All right, nice. There's a couple new cards I got printed. I think the Zygarde GX was the one that says EX or just GXs. So 120 flash. Um, Zach, Zach is making this game quite competitive. 
even yeah. though uh, it's very uh, was it four zero earlier. Um, and I, I kind of think he's, he stole that early game away with the uh, the Jake's attack last he game. He did so. that big miss, and the Max Potions never came through for Jake. Yep. Um, Zach has a game plan though. He's been he's been putting it into effect very well, kind of keeping himself in this game. And Jake is going to start recycling through these Greninjas, sending yep. up clean ones. Um, you know, it, it, when you're working this hard to take one prize, it's 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 a lot tougher than what these Buzzball decks are doing. Absorption GX your Earth for yep. for all the prizes. So. Uh, field blower big again. Choice bands need to be hit the bin, so uh, that shadow stitching isn't hitting seventy. Yeah, um, he's gonna search through, see how many float stones he has left. Uh, it looks like none. Uh, we do see Cynthia two N in there, which might be relevant late game okay. to end Jake out of the game. Yep. Maybe keeping off of uh, key cards like Enhanced Hammer if that Beast Energy ever comes down. Uh, max potion, the other max potion as well. Yep. So he might be thinking here, Lele. Energy, okay. Um, as a retreat option, yep. uh, when something is KO'd, and just hits for 120. Yep, not a lot of value putting that metal energy anywhere else. Um, might, might as well have, if it, you know, the flow stone gets blurred off, give yourself that pivot point. That's kind of been the staple uh, of these decks all weekend. Not just that, but if Jake opts to go with a shadow stitching with just a basic water energy, another energy attachment, energy drive KO. Yep. Um, onto the break, one energy retreat, and then go into the uh, Necrozma. And since he can't KO off of the bench, um, that that energy staying. Yep. Uh, big oh, no this, band. This, this is crazy for uh, for Zach if he's able to get to an energy. It looks like he can't. Um, I'm thinking he can go just dark flash KO here, but he might have gone full stone retreat KO with uh, the Lele. And which would have been nice. Yeah. Which would have been super, nice super because nice dark design. flash obviously that guaranteed 120. Wonderful. However, not a lot of splash energies have been coming down. Choice bands kind of are just nowhere to be found either. Clean Greninja coming up, but uh, you know uh, the boots are to Jake right now to figure something out. Yep. If he doesn't have an energy and has to retreat into that heavily damaged Greninja, uh, we can kind of see this snowball out of control. So, hmm. Jake might think that he needs to just keep applying pressure with a Shadow Stitch, and he might play right into getting O-Code by the Ultra Necrozma. And so... He's thinking, if I Shadow Stitch, I can't get a KO on this um, this uh, Dawn Wings, and he gets a Float Stone. Um, I'm pretty much just sacrificing a hit for the turn, doing nothing, and it might get uh, KO'd back. So, this something, is a great play, honestly. Yeah, something Jake's got to be keeping in mind here is, if he keeps Shadow Stitching, every Psychic Energy he gets off the board isn't coming back. Because yeah. Zach doesn't run Super Rod, right? He relies nope. heavy on those Malamars to do that recycling for him. Yep. Uh, so, you know, knocking off three Psychics here is really big. And that puts Zach in a position to find another Psychic to even do anything with that Ultra Necrozma at the top of the screen. So he's attaching, um, not Splash. And this is a really tough decision for him. I think he's just going to go with the Shadow Stitch here. And just say, okay, well... If you have the opportunity, if not, all right, Moonlight Slashes. Okay, so, so abilities are on, and this is huge. If Zach can get another attacker down um, and double Psychic Recharge, that's crucial. And we, it looks like he doesn't have one. All we see is a Mimikyu, NK, and I think that last card's a Malamar. So... Hmm. That is a rough looking hand. Yeah, that is that a is rough really, looking really bad. Hand. Um, Jake might have picked, picked the perfect opportunity to uh, avoid going with the uh, the shadow stitch there. Yep. Take the moonlight slash. Turn to an aggressive play. So, Jake looking at Zach saying, "Okay, I gave you a turn off. If you can't build another attacker, you've got to psychic barrier or excuse me, psychic recharge onto this alternate Krosma, dump two more psychics in, and then he can uh, shadow stitch yep. and kind of lock up this game." So now the float zone's probably going to uh, be used on the Ultra Necrozma. I'm thinking he goes retreat, goes into the Ultra, or no, he really wants to save that for a fresh break. So just energy drive for 40, and that's not something you want to see. No, no you, 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 you want another Dawn Wings, or you want uh, another Ultra in play. Could have thought here be um, come up, bring up the Ultra Necrozma, Float Stone, or excuse me, Max, Max Potion, Potion is mm -hmm. huge. I think I think I would have liked to see a knockout there. Yeah. Um, tough decision here for Jake. I think he just goes um, a splash onto a fresh break and kind of bait out the ultra to come active. Um, that's what uh, I, I would be looking for. Just kind of um, forcing the ultra out. Yep. Um, and, and making him retreat the uh, the lele. 
I think Jake is uh, is feeling that he, he totally got away with one on that. Turn. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, uh, no problem. En- energy uh, drive for forty. Good joke. Let me <laughs> let me show you what forty damage actually looks like, yep. and that's in the hands of these Greninja breaks. Um, Ultra Ball just thinning stuff out. He knows he got rid of a lot of supporters early. Yep. Wants to maximize the opportunity to draw into those because he has no way to really find Do them. Do you see an N in his hand? I I don't see an I N. I see, see Splash Energy and another Ultra Ball, maybe. And what end am I at? Moonlight Slash. Because slash. Yep, he noticed, all right, um, you let me do it, and I didn't really get punished in response, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep doing this. Mimikyu, Mysterious Treasure off the top. Okay. Huge. Discard an NK. Um, we need a Dawn Wings or we need another Ultra. Nothing. Nothing. We got an N, a Cynthia, and a Lele. Maybe Lele for the N and play it? Or just sit on it? Okay. Um, He's out of attackers. He's pretty much just working with just this Lele, the other Lele on the bench, and um, that Ultra. Okay, so we've spent uh, almost 20 minutes into this round here. Yep. Zach knows he has another. He, he doesn't have any of the attackers. He, uh, he had to pitch um, some of his Pokemon early, trying to develop his board. Yep. Is, is this where you see, okay, give myself maximum time for game three? Because these games can grind out very quickly. Um, honestly, when I'm playing in top cut, uh, we got 75 minutes. I'm pretty much just grinding out game two as much as I can. Um, these games take a little bit longer, but uh, once you move into a, uh, a game three, everyone just thinks to themselves, all right, we, we both have to play a little bit faster. Also, against Greninja, when you're going into, uh, into time in a top cut, the way the, the way the rules are changed is that if you at least take four prizes going into the, um, when time's called, then that game's going to count in your favor. Also, you can have a prize race, so if time gets called when they're both in game three, we see Zach always taking a, quite the lead on Jake, and he has the Giratina to regulate his um, his giant water shuriken, mm-hmm. meaning that you kind of want this to go to time somewhat. Wow, not what Zach wanted to do there. Ultra Necrozma comes up, Photon Geyser. Knocks out. For 170 yeah. on an already damaged oh. Greninja. That's Yep, that's, that's the scoops. Good game, good game. Gentlemen's handshake here. Pick them up. Shuffle up. Game three. 30 minutes on the clock. We got plenty of time. Let's get ourselves a result here. Uh, hopefully one that goes the whole distance. Somebody taking six prizes. Definitely. Um, I'm thinking that the Max Potions finally played a role into the game. Didn't happen in game one. And uh, the fact that they have it in game two uh, made the critical difference between the trades that we saw going on. 100%. Found him on exactly the turns he wanted him. Uh, you know, that one turn we saw Max Potion, Splash Energy, Choice Band, and he was able to fully heal the Greninja in the active, step up with the Greninja Breaks, Splash Energy, and start going work. Yep. Um, I think Jake also saw a way to take advantage of the uh, GX attack being used on Don Wings early. Mm-hmm. So he goes, uh, Don Wings, GX attack, um, take my KO on your Greninja. But what that means is now the 120 breaks on the bench aren't food for the sky uh the sky score uh sky, sky scorching scorch. light yeah yep. yeah so that was they could be a clean ko some brokies uh, star um star you um or the 120 damage greninja or greninja break mm-hmm. um, we get the 180 and that's a little bit over so that is just 10 more yeah than, uh, more than the, the 170 that the go. greninja break brings to the table with it got a mulligan all, all greninjas do it you're supposed to Honestly, whenever my opponent opens a Froakie and never mulligans under three games, I'm just like, you, you are just something else. <laughs> and no wonder you're playing this deck. <laughs> I never get that. I'm only like five times. So Zach will be on the play here, which is obviously to his advantage, which means he'll get Mucho more more uh, Malamar turns. Yeah. Um, would do you, he has a Tapulele in hand, and I believe I saw another draw supporter. Do you think he uh, Bridget's right off the bat? It depends on how many other uh, mysterious um, treasure mm-hmm. and Ultra Ball we see. If he has an established board state where he's like, oh, I can just operate without um, going for the Bridget here, then you definitely take it. You need to play aggressive. Um, we saw the payoff. Turns. Opens the Giratina. Look at them. We hear him laughing. <laughs> I my- <laughs> got him. Got him. They chuckling out there. Jake just drops his hands. Yeah. Point out. He's like, really? Prize it, please. He's, what he's, he's like, like, I got, I got, a, I got a game two Lele start. <laughs> like, and on, here you, you just, you just coming in with Let Giratina. Let the boy live. Right off the bat, we see the Beast Energy, a bunch of energy down, not too many attackers. Dawn Wings? Okay, I see Ultra. Yep. Yeah, he's pretty much fine. Um, all you're really worried about prizing is that Giratina. Yeah. And opening it makes you feel good. It goes good okay. I don't, have to, I, don't have to, I don't have to sweat it now. I, yeah, just, yeah, I know yeah, it's yeah. there, uh, and I can, I can go into my game. Zach's one of those guys. He's not losing the Childish Videx. He's playing that Giratina. Sycamore, and uh, he's going to go, even with the Malian hand. Just, and we out. I yep. need energy. I need to see this, uh, this letter. You know Zach double-checked before he sycamored there off that Ultra Ball how many Malamars he has access to. Yep. Uh, 
otherwise, I'm not sure he would have just pitched that so uh, so abruptly like that. Yeah. So um, gets the psychic energy down onto Dawn Wings, uh, throws down the ultra, and you think he's gonna get NK here? Looks like he is. Mysterious treasure. I like it. He knows uh, he'll get another turn. He'll get a turn of Malamar, at least one. Yep. Um, and it's clearly crucial to him setting up himself in a position when Shadow Stitching does start, does start that he can continue uh, plucking up those prizes yep. one frog at a time. He'll actually get at least two, considering that he's going um, going first. Yep. So it's turn of Frokies, turn of Frogadier, and then those are uh, um, another turn before you get the Greninjas out. So this is awesome. So he just goes uh, Froakie pass, kind of saying, oh, my hand's kind of dead. Uh, I got nothing. Um, that's, a, that's, a bit, uh, that's a facade. I don't, I don't deal with that the at all. Bluff, if, I, if I ever see that, I'm, I'm, like, I'm not ending or, or like, I'll end you if I want to. It's going to happen. Get him with that Chris yeah, Angel yeah, mind yeah, freak. Yeah, yeah, see yeah. if you can uh, definitely, definitely keep, keep him off yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, minute. you got something. No lie to me. They're sitting on like Frogadier, Energy, N, Brooklyn Hill Band. Jake laughing. Oh, you got it all. Ha, 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 ha. Knowing yeah, yeah. that he's got a full grip of seven, that he's going to be able to friggin' uh, do his thing next turn. He's just happy he didn't get end here into, into just air. Yep. Um, we did see the Ultra Ball inside Jake's hand. Um, so he has access to a Lele, if need be. And did he get any energy? No. Bricks off on the energy. Okay. Uh, did, did he have a way... I haven't seen how many psychics have actually hit the discard. Na None. Malamar, zero. Empty. Wow. This is huge for Jake. No letters. That's awful. It's a hard pass. Okay, he Drops. does get he does get another turn of um Okay, first psychic dex, recharge. For, finally gets a deck search. One Frogadier. Um, one's on board. And two Frogadiers. Two. Two Frogadiers. Two's, two's oh, all we got. Oh, all right. Oh. Uh, let's see what happens to us. All right. Water. Swing. And dupe. So, what would Zach want to see off the top of his deck here? I wouldn't mind Professor's Letter because he has a Sycamore. Just yeah. scoop in just some Psychics, dump, and start powering some yep. stuff up. And, and take a KO on one of his uh, Frogadier. Like, perfect turn. Letter off the top. Two Psychics. Sycamore them away. Attach a Metal for turn on your Ultra. Psychic Recharge on Flashman Necrozma. Step yep. in, knock out. Okay. I see uh, Jake taking a uh, couple extra seconds to shuffle his deck. They both know they're in um, a game three situation. That's it's honestly not going to take that long. Um, there might be a point where he concedes and the beast, beast energy. energy. Interesting. Um, let's see if he's throwing out his floatstone first, or if he wants to ultra ball for a different target. Okay, so he ultra balled away the ultra necrozma, and we saw that kind of bite him in the butt last time yep. because he didn't have any attackers left when it came down to the end of the game. And did that just ruin him? Other Dawning prize. Yep. He has no more attackers. Okay, that's it. So he's working with one Dawn Wings, one Ultra, and because he Ultra Ball the other way around, uh, the other one away, he needs to get a stretcher for it. So he's taking inventory of his deck. We are going to see the Floatstone. We are going to see the Sycamore, but he needs to find an energy and then a way to put it in the discard, specifically Psychic and a way to put it in. So Metal off the top. Did we get like a Mysterious no, Treasure, nothing. Ultra Ball, Field anything? Blower. Oh, Guzma Mysterious Treasure. He has a Mysterious Treasure second to last next to the Metal Energy. So he'll be able to Mysterious Treasure. That's a Guzma, my guy. Is it? I believe it's a Guzma. He just passes. Oh, see? no. Yep, oh, yep. no. Oh no, Jake, his heart, it just grew three Pumping. times that yeah, day, yeah, yeah. Grinch style. He's just, warm, yeah. warm, 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 warm. he's ready to go. And he, what he's looking for here, uh, Field Blower Shadow Stitch. Take off the Floatstone, and then Shadow Stitch away the Malamar, and be like, yeah, yeah. Is that a clean Sycamore? N. Clean and okay. Okay, so ooh, we are going to see... Um, we are going to see the Shadow Stitch. Uh, if Jake hits the, the Field Blower, we are in a whole world of hurt if we're on Zach's side of the table. And usually you need to hit this threshold of taking at least at least going down to four to three prizes before your opponent, um, or the turn your opponent plays down a break. And right now he's at six left. And my man's got a full board of Greninja. There's the Mysterious Treasure and the Psychic Energy. Just a, tad uh, uh, just a bit, bit late. late. And all right, Energy comes down. I think I see a band in his hand. Um, he's correctly holding it. And Malamar comes out with a Shadow Stitch. And take the 40. Uh, Beast Energy on Ultra Necrozma is nice. 150. 150 clean. Yeah, 150, yeah. 150 is good because it's good against any non-break Greninja, Greninja. Whereas uh, the Flash Attack, Dark Flash, obviously not one hit KOing these 130 HP Greninjas. Um, Jake wants to see uh, an Enhance Hammer here and, a, and two breaks, even the Frogadier. Um, looks like he's opting just to go with the Stretcher. Grab the break. Uh, make sure this guy doesn't get KO'd. Super odd. That's a tell. So, wow, that's <laughs> insane. The recovery. Wow, man. 
He, he's a healer. <laughs> this is nuts, man. Shaman Jake. Come back from the grave. Necromancy. This is nuts. Getting a little Nosferatu Jake yeah, out here. Yeah, sure. Whatever you gotta do. Uh, Everybody thought he was dead, but he comes to life at night. Here we go. Yeah, you, heard, you heard Jake earlier talking about, oh, you got everything. Disrespectful. Disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, you don't come at me with that when you put three good engines in the play next turn. Like we said, mind games. <laughs> Jake going heavy Chris Angel out yeah. here. Uh, <laughs> just oh, all I have is a Froki pass. Max, Max potion, potion, Evo Soda. Evo Soda turns into Frogadier. Uh, we're another break, right? Yep. Another break it is. Alrighty. Make sure stuff doesn't get KO'd, I guess. Totally fair. Uh, two, obviously, two Greninja breaks is exactly where he wants to be operating. Otherwise, you know, a Guzma retreat can take the other uh, Greninja off the board, especially with that beast energy if he didn't ha hit that enhanced hammer. Yep. Um, don't let the stream fool you. Zach did take a prize last turn. Um, he's at five to Jake six, just in case you're thinking that uh, he might be able to use a uh, the Moon's Eclipse in the future. Um, Zach has a lot of cards in hand, but none of them look too great. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, not uh, looking too awesome. Something Cynthia. He's like, I'm going to throw all of these back in and hope I never see them ever again. Yep, yep. Um, the fact that Jake missed a ban there, huge. Shadow Sushi 40, that's not what you want. You want a, you want a Tuco. You want a, maybe a Shadow Sushi and then maybe go into the... Uh, the, um, what's it called? Uh, Moonlight Slash. Yep. That's that's how he has been pivoting that, you know, on turns where he thinks he can get away with it. He has been doing that. Metal Energy down finally on that Ultra Necrozma. Um, Zach's got to get a lot of mileage uh, out of these two attackers here. Yep. And if uh, Jake is paying attention, he knows that there's only one attacker left in the deck. Yep. Max Potion cleans off all that damage. Again, with the healing... The heels. Chill, that dude. heels. Um, was that a, Final Fantasy? Was that a white mage? Which one? The Final Fantasy? Any of the Final Fantasies. White oh, mage? No, I just I just played X and uh, eight. Good night. Get yeah, out of here. I know, man. I'm pretty bad. Good uh, lord. Uh, we just had Yuna. She just summoned stuff. And I was here like, we were right, building right, a rapport with uh, with the people in the stream, and that <laughs> just went out the window in a heartbeat. You never played Tactics, man? Tactics like, is uh, amazing. Dude, I heard Tactics was really good. <laughs> it's so good. I don't have time to play. Can we focus on the game? You yeah, completely absolutely. derailed us. All right, all right, fine, 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 fine. Ultra Ball, Lele, Sycamore, my hand's dead, um, but Max Potion's busted, and poof, right into the splash. Man, an Enhanced Hammer here would just be, like, everything. Enhanced Hammer Choice Band. We digging? Brooklet? Brooklet? Star you? I'm feeling it. He has the star me in here. This is that prize. We're good to go. Maybe a Froki instead? No, nah, he's got to star you. Man, 2018. We're still playing star me. It's good. Boy. Space beacon. Yeah, space beacons. Think of matter space. Throw around his cards, really saying, how am I going to snowball this lead? into the victory, especially when I'm staring down Garatina. Yep, we see the field blower there. Uh, I'd hold on to it. Oh, absolutely. I, I'd hold on to it. Choice um, band, Choice big. band, and the only thing else that you can ask for right here is um, Enhanced Hammer. All right, he plays the, um, plays the field blower anyway. Maybe he's thinking, oh, I might get end out of it, and I really want to take away this uh, retreat options. Yep. And he just Shadow Stitches. 110 on the uh, Dawn Wings. Field blower comes down, takes off one Choice band. Uh, you don't really care if you hit the Brooklyn Hill or not. He, he gets Pokemon like no tomorrow. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Professor's Letter going to drag out some Psychics. I'll tell you what. Four. Four left in deck. Our, uh, our man's in an odd spot right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, Zach, Zach uh, not helped by that Cynthia, really. Nope. He's just kind of floundering a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we haven't really seen his plan come together uh, as he would have intended. Psychic down. And... I think he just goes for the Dark Flash here. Yeah. Uh, here, take the 120 or 150 with the Beast. Okay, so we see the Dark Flash uh, come down. Uh, Flashman Necrozma in the prizes, which means uh, he can't even Beast Ring next turn onto anything of value. Nope. That is a it, nightmare. It, it would honestly be just, just be going to the active, and then as soon as it unloads all its energy, he's it's, just shadow stitching like crazy. It's cool. You hit a damaged Greninja for a 4 trillion damage. Okay. I don't like this Max Potion here. Um, I think he should be anticipating the Beast Ring coming down, and whatever Greninja is active, it's just going to get KO'd. So I would be perfectly comfortable with the Splash Energy just proccing mm -hmm. um, off a KO that potentially might come off um, from the Ultra. But he might be thinking to himself, I don't have the KO on this Dawn Wings yet. 
and I don't have a Froki, meaning I can't make a break a few turns from now. Um, That's a great point. Um, it is to note that he did have another splash in hand. Yes, yes, So, yes. So that, that, hel that helps that decision tree a little bit. Um, we do see a heavy amount of draw support, basic, uh, basic water there, and a Greninja. And, and no hand, way to get to the Frogadier. So the Hand Sander comes down, that's perfect for him, but it's kind of getting two shot anyways. Right? So yep. he might be thinking to himself, uh, this is the only time I can play in Hand Sander anyway against your deck, so I'm just going to play it. We didn't get that beast energy in the Lost Zone here eventually. But uh, it is to know that that's where that goes. Uh, Bridget just hoping that his first search might have been wrong and maybe that uh, that attacker's still in there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's just looking to get extra counts that he might have not checked for last turn. Um, I know he was checking for a little bit of energy, and now he's just looking through, how would I close out this game? How many Guzma do I have? Can I go a KO and then, um, you know, maybe my uh, Sky Scorching Light GX sky bails scorching me light out of this GX. And he's eyeing that Guzma. And he's, he's going to fail it, but um, he does have a Lele available to him, should Shadow Stitch uh, turn off for a turn, yep. um, if Jake just happens to want to Moonlight Slash. I don't see why, the max pushes are um, definitely putting in a word for that. Yeah, we see the, the big difference between games, game one and two and three so far. Um, Zach had the stumble game three, but Jake was able to use those max potions to a lot of value. Okay, so we see it. Um, the Floatstone Retreat, full knockout, and... That's kind of what I was saying about the max potion. Mm -hmm. I was thinking um, you just kind of go, oh, all right, I feel like this guy's going to get knocked out anyways. Um, I'll hold this for the next break that's available to me, but maybe that's just me anticipating the um, the future Ultra Necrozma uh, swinging in a little bit too much. So something uh, Zach might be thinking is, you know, he did Professor's Letter for two Psychics, which means he can attach 80, attach, or excuse me, attach 100, 100. attach 100. 100, yeah. Uh, which, again, is a two-piece on anything on Jake's side. Absolutely. So really understanding that he doesn't have maybe his key attackers back, but what his routes to victory are. Yep. However, we see the end come down, kind of disrupt that plan a little bit. Uh, Zach's feet still to the fire. Metal energy off the top. And two metal letter. energy. Uh, two metal energy are ugly, but that letter's real nice. Yeah, super, super nice. Shadow stitching. Um, all Jake needs to do is absolutely hit a Greninja next turn, and I think he's in the clear, especially after getting rid of that beast energy. That was huge. Yep, so uh, inking in hand, that's not going to do much. Letter with the two psychics if he's got them, and then just going for that uh, <clears throat> geyser geyser. Yep. <laughs> also, when Jake finally does take a knockout, at least Beast Ring will be on. Yeah. And maybe he'll get lucky off uh, one of his prizes. He'll find what he needs and be able to Beast Ring to something relevant. Yep. So... Definitely grabbing double psychic here. Um, he might just go attach, attach, and then I really don't care about my beast ring. But discarding that ultra was huge early. Um, yes. He should just kept it. Um, ah, that's what that's what happens when you don't search that uh, your first opening turn and you look at all your attackers. Ooh, I'm curious as to that attachment there. Um, and just to pass, uh, I, would you have taken the time since you just got two psychics to put the and you know you have another one in deck and a draw support. Don't you want to just get 100 on the Greninja, especially since both uh, max potions are burned out? Uh, honestly, I definitely would have. But maybe he's thinking, if I if I discard both Psychic Energy, that's it. They're all gone. Um, and I'm out of them. And we see Mysterious Treasure come out. Lele and Guzma. And there's no energy left in deck, right? From uh, what I saw? I did not see any. Okay. If it was, it might have been a metal, which is, as we know, isn't part of this game plan here. Nope. So... Lele down, metal energy on it. We're gonna start swinging with this boy eventually. Just hard pass. Field blowers. Field blowers. Okay. Big. Um, in the band, really unnecessary, but it doesn't really matter. You might as well get it off the board since you gotta. You gotta. Yeah, you gotta be able for it. It's no problem. Um, Shadow stitch, four prizes apiece. And Beast ring. He's bringing up the Malamar. What is Zach playing to right now? The Guzma, perhaps. Hmm. Interesting. Zach, maybe he's thinking I need a few turns to have this guy tank away, or I'll feed you a Malamar and hit you with the Dawnwing's uh, Moon's Eye Eclipse, or means Moon's Eclipse GX. Okay, which would take a knockout and protect him for a turn. Yep, and put you at three prizes apiece, um, a KO on a Lele, and a KO on the uh, final Froki that's chilling on the bench. 
could be the game ender. And yep. he's thinking to himself, he needs to shadow stitch me. So I don't mind sitting here with Malamar for a few turns. Right. As we know, again, as we mentioned before, Greninja not playing a lot of Guzma, so nope. uh, that Flashman and Necrozma are pretty safe on the bench. Yeah. So Lele's getting pretty pumped up right now. Energy Drive is going to be doing 80 if he, sticks with, uh, if he sticks to a shadow stitch for just one energy. And he's looking for a discard pile. Um, time is winding down, and they they must be feeling the pressure. Um, they're definitely thinking, all right, I don't know how much time I have left, maybe five minutes, maybe six minutes, but they definitely know it's not that close to time. Mm -hmm. And both players' decks looking super thin. He already burned the super rod. He already burned the stretcher. Yep. Um, and I think he'll have... Dude, he's, is he's Zach's no route to victory here? Is Zach's, it's, it's, it's just out? feed him, is just keep feeding him one prizers? It might be it. And Jake might need to get a sense of that and realize that he needs to come off of uh, shadow, shadow stitch, stitching yeah, earlier than slashing. he wants to. Yep. If he keeps playing stuff down in his hand, you know, just even an N, yeah, drawing good, just, back just up lower. to four. All right, so he's space beaconing. Um, that's plus one, so you get two water energy out of that. Um, yep. It's an extra card in hand, uh, and that'll help the N out a lot. But he's attaching it, going for a retreat. And he's thinking, all right, this Lele's going to hurt. And I definitely don't want to get knocked out. And I don't want my break to get um, uh, Moon's Eclipse GX'd. So, Zach choosing to go with the Energy Drive here. And I see a Guzman in his hand. What is he going to do for this turn? Just Energy Drive for 80? Uh, maybe Retreat, stall you out a little bit with the other Malamar? But that opens up the that opens up the gates. So he's got two Guzmas. Okay, so Guzman and Lele. Moon's Eclipse goes down to two prizes. Untouchable next turn. Wild. So now... We're down to the wire here. We're down to the wire. If we get another Guzman to the Starmie for a KO, and now we just need both Lele and another attacker to take out one last break to finish it off. And I'm not sure if he has all the, the, the amount of Guzmans available to do this. Uh, so Jake may be sensing some. That is a small deck. Oh, that for both players. Very, oh, yeah. They're, they're, oh, they're getting super thin here. I think uh, just based on what we could see, Zach's deck a little bit more stout than oh, Jake's. Oh, yeah, that, that, that a little tankier. Uh, two cards off the top for Zach. That Guzma going away. I see a B-string, and I think that's a metal energy. Uh, no damage. Oh, it's N and B-string. And a... Oh, it's Stretcher. Stretcher's big. The Stretcher's boy. big. A little, little necromancy of his own. <laughs> yeah, he's like, all right. I, <laughs> I see your Nosferatu. <laughs> yeah, I see yeah. your Nosferatu. Oh, was that a beast energy to discard pile? Judge should have caught that. It's supposed to be in the lost zone. It's totally fine, though. What do you get here? We got a reader, folks. Yet again, you Yeah, we got a reader. <laughs> okay. Come on, Jake. Yo, can I check it out? Can I check it out? See what you're doing? Uh, I think he's debating if he needs another attacker. Wait, does does uh, does the GX attack remove the effect, the effect? of the shadow? No, no, no. Shadow Stitch is probably to the player, not the Pokemon. I'm okay. pretty sure it says this Pokemon is unaffected um, by the effects of attacks and damage done to it next turn. I think that's what we're asking. Like That's what they're asking right here. Yeah. Um, I believe the same situation came up game two, and it didn't seem to raise any alarm. So, so if he goes he can invasion. That'd be, that'd be pretty, uh, pretty cute. So he's going to go with the, uh, the 120 here. I don't like that. I think he should have retreated or stretchered up another, um, a fresh uh, tanky uh, attacker. Maybe even um, like another Dawn Wings or, because we know that one's prized, or the other Ultra. Um, just so he can go, I might deck you out. Yep. So instead he's going to get Shadow Stitch. And I think him throwing away that Dawn Wings there put that in per into perspective. Like, uh-oh. Yeah. That really, really hurt. Uh, that... Those two B-strings, uh, a couple turns too late, yeah, and, too nothing. and not enough resources in the discard to really do anything with that. Nope. Uh, another power of Greninja is how slowly it grinds through its prizes, that by the time you get there, you might not have the resources in the deck anymore to really make B-string worthwhile. So Rescue Stretcher pops right back up. And, and a Psychic Energy. So he can Energy Drive here for 100, and then just get Moonlight Slash for massive damage, and that's not going to do it. Um, but that would activate the Malamar. So instead, he's going to go for 80. Jake's going to play this correctly. He's just going to retreat right out. Great player. That's why he's in top eight. He's doing what he's got to do. Maybe he's, I think Zach was really hoping that maybe uh, Jake would make a misplay there. And, uh, and Ooh. That, might, that buys him a lot of that turns. That buys him some time. But this lady's got to get out of there. Yeah, 100%. It does have, obviously, the necessary energy requirements to, to go back. Uh, maybe iron up their rescue stretcher. What can I retreat to that can eat a bunch of damage? Yeah. And this is just the power of shadow stitching. 
Since he has an energy in hand, I wouldn't mind him grabbing a Lele to yep. be able to attach to it and then yep. retreat again. You know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. So, grabs it, benches, passes. So he can retreat into another Lele. He can retreat. Oh, energy drives. Okay. Energy 80? drives. Put, see, that's putting pressure on, but he's... he's he, that's, that's, that's incidentals right there. Mm-hmm. He's just putting damage on, putting damage on. Um, he does have that option to, if Jake keeps dumping down all these resources, he's got one, two cards in hand, and that deck is almost gone. Yep, so he's going to stitch here. Draw. Sycamore? Oh, does he even have the deck for it? No! No, the deck out. All right, Scoopsies, yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> Great game on both sides. Whew. Um, Discarding that extra Ultra Macross, but really hurt him. Hurt him big. Uh, it hurt him badly. Because then he, he had to start protecting attackers you don't even want to be attacking with. Um, and then uh, Jake squeezes out even against Giratino. We see the power of shadow stitching. Yeah, um, I, Just keeping Malamar at bay. I'm not a huge fan of that Sigma there. Obviously, he only had seven cards left. Besides that, besides the, the obvious there, yeah, I yeah. really think he had a strategy available to him to retreat into the other Lele, take a couple shots, retreat into That That into was all gone once the Dawn Wings dropped. As soon as the Dawn Wings drop and he's only down at one prize, oh, they're going to get to you eventually. Like, you can only, you can only be treating so, right, so but much. Right, but his resources might have been down to the point where he didn't have any ends anymore, and he was just he, he was drawing his cards. Yeah, but at that point, I just go... Um, it's like, who cares if you spake beacon? Mo- there's no way to Moonlight slash, Moonlight slash. That's all I used to keep doing. The, the 80 and 80, and then he had the one ban on deck. Uh, that, that's all I was thinking. Um, but I do think before the Dawn Wings got KO'd, should have retreated, should have brought up the other Mali, or should have brought up um, the Giratina at least, even to take, take some damage, because we know that he had a Guzma left in deck. Yep. Um, okay. So even if you bait out a Moonlight Slash, that, that Lele can turn right into a Guzma, Guzma, because Guzma. we're out of here. Yeah. Uh, very well played by both players, great run Absolutely. here, Madison. That was really uh, fun to watch. A uh, bunch of masters here, and they we- weaved through the crowd, survived the 32-point <laughs> uh, ridiculous top eight cut that we had where yeah. people bubbled out, and... Uh, we have our man, oh, Jake man. Ewart, moving forward. Top, Top four. four. Uh, he's got a field of Buzz Rock to uh, Buzz Wool, both Garbodor form and Lycanroc form to run through. Um, we have an interview with him in, uh, what, 20 seconds? So we're going to play a couple of ads, and we'll be right back. Hello and welcome back with our top eight winner, Jake Ewert. Congratulations, my man. Thank you. Uh, we just got a pretty spicy bit of news. That win gives him 130 points and his Worlds invite pretty much on the nose. So my man <laughs> yeah. gets to take a break until Worlds if he wants yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much. So interesting matchup there. He has the Giratina promo. You have the ability to turn off his Psychic Recharge. Um, you fell to him twice in the Swiss rounds, yep. able to take it down when it mattered. Uh, what oh, did you? Other way around. No, no, no. Yeah, he I, lost twice in Swiss. Oh, I, yeah. thought, he, I thought he two owed him twice. No, no, no. That's why. Whoa, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy. So um, let, let's <laughs> talk a little bit about just that matchup in general. You lost to it twice. What did you learn, and then what did you try and do uh, in the top eight to uh, to maybe you know maybe hit yeah. water energies and ma- uh, max potions when you need them? But besides that, yeah. So basically, in uh, Swiss, it was the first time I had played against uh, an alternate across uh, Malamar and stuff. Uh, during the day, and I didn't really know what to do because he had Tina promo down. I I didn't really test a lot going into no, this. That's fine. I, I put like like 12, 15 games in the deck, but I played Greninja like a lot and stuff. And so when we played him in uh, the first day of Swiss, I was stitching a lot, and that that did not work. He two owed me real quick. And like today, I took a game off him, uh, or no, yesterday I took a game off of him because I learned how to Moonlight Slash. Today I forgot how to Moonlight Slash and just stitched in our uh, second round today. And then I was like, all right, Moonlight Slash got me that one game. Maybe if I get to go first, because I never got to go first in either of our first games the other two rounds. It's like if I get to go first, yeah. maybe if I get to Moonlight Slash like a lot earlier, I can end up maybe pulling out two games. Yeah, we were kind of seeing you use uh, alternating Shadow Stitching, Moonlight Slash, taking knockouts, being a little bit more aggressive than maybe uh, Russ and I honestly thought. Yeah. Uh, but you were really picking your, your points to, to kind of jab in, get a knockout here yeah. and there. Yeah. Um, a lot of buzz rock in the top eight. Uh, yep. You've been waiting through that all day, yep. all day yesterday, all day today. You're in the point. Buzz garb is on the opposite side of the bracket, yep. which is considerably more difficult for you, I'd <laughs> oh, like yeah. to think. He's also got to play against Igor. Um, so that's like not only a weird matchup, but I'm pretty sure Ian's used to it because Ian did when he's going into the top four. Igor might be going in with uh, his own version of how to approach that matchup um, with his uh, three baby buzz wall list. 
like running around. So he's got a hurdle, and you might see Buzz Rock in the finals. Uh, yeah, Igor definitely uh, an end boss in the Pokemon TCG. <laughs> but uh, so Buzz Rock, tell us a little bit about the dichotomy of that matchup and how you've approached it throughout the day to see so much success. So during the tournament, I'm five and one against it, and in all five wins, basically, once you get out. Um, Basically every matchup, they end up taking two to three prize cards like early and stuff. Like you expect that it's Greninja, you're gonna come back. But in Buzzwall, they usually take four, which is like really hard to come back from because if they haven't used their GX somehow at that point and they're like drawing really hot, that's really hard to come back from. But getting out of break and being able to uh, end and max potion and stuff because late game, uh, they can only hit 160 when you're shadow stitching them unless mm -hmm. they draw their strongs. Yeah. And Max Potion is just so key because if they hit your your Greninja break for 160, you're just gonna Max Potion and put another energy on there and just keep stitching them. So, uh, you do play two Max Potion, which is a deviation from a lot of lists we've seen. Two Enhanced Hammer, those got to be great on those strong energies and like you said, healing those damage numbers when they can't <laughs> yeah. quite get that knockout. Yeah. Uh, who was your one loss out of curiosity uh, playing um, Buzzwell? Uh, Sam Chen. Never heard of him. <laughs> Our, our, our boy Who's that nobody? <laughs> our, our Jake Kentape, uh, you're going you're gonna to catch a buzz rock next round. Yep. Um, I can't imagine that, that you are feeling anything but confident going in. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to wish you the best of luck. We're going to flip it to some ads. On behalf of Russ and Jake, I'm Kirk, and uh, we will catch you for our top, more, top four match.